Okay, so I've been talking about uh, uh, majority logic decoding. Read Miller codes. Uh, so, so let's uh, let's do one thing now. So, what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an example and uh, try and work out the the equations and the multiple step uh, algorithm that will come out. And with that, I think uh, that's pretty much all we'll do uh, in this class. Okay, and I think this evening's class we won't have. Okay, so planning to do something in the evening, so it's not going to work out. Okay, so we won't have a class in the evening. Just just this. One. All right, so let's take an example. So let's take a slightly more non-trivial example. Uh, maybe we'll take the read middle of code for the two length 32. Okay, so slightly bigger example to see how easily we can come up with uh, come up with this. Thing. Okay, <coughs> so so like I said, it's enough if you show uh, some kind of a multiple step decoding algorithm for let's say the zero bit or something like that, the zero position. That's what I'll do. That's the easiest. And do it for other positions also. To do it for the zero position, you can always do it for any other position because it's going to go through. I'm going to use flats through the origin. Okay, so we instead of using flats through the origin, we use flats through whichever point you want, and we will get the same. Okay, so you will do it for the zero position. So, <coughs> so what is the error correcting capability here? What is the minimum distance? Right. So, so you know that this uh, parameter j is going to be 7. Okay, so this implies, what is this j? j is the number of equations that you will get orthogonal on either a bit or a flat or a two flat etc. Et okay. So, since r is 2, this is going to be a three step algorithm. Okay. But instead of starting with the first step, I will try and start with the third step first and then go towards the first step. Okay. So, that is easier because you can come up with the equations in a slightly better fit. Okay. So in the first step, so so three step is possible. We know that three step is possible, but we'll start with the first step. Okay, in the first step, you are going to find e zero, but you'll need seven <coughs> seven equations involving e zero, right? So what are the seven equations? So you can take it as any any seven you like. So you can take e zero plus e one, e zero plus e two, so on. E zero plus e sub. Okay, so this could be my seven things that I want to get as input in my first step. Okay, so from here, if I do a majority on this, I'll get e zero, right? <coughs> then what do you need? So let's say I'll only take e zero plus e one. For other things, I'll say I'll repeat the same thing. I'm going to take so this is a line, right? Zero and one is a line. See, so, so you remember what I mean when I say one. What, what do I mean when I say one? It is zero 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 one. What do I mean when I say two? It is 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Okay. 7 would be 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so it is 5 bit uh, guys. Okay, so the, the Euclidean geometry I am dealing with is 5 comma 2. Okay. So 0, 1 is a line, right? Line is just two, 2 points. Now I need flats that pass through 0, 1. Okay, how do I get that? All I have to do is find one more point and then XR it with this. Uh, this one okay so it's very easy to do that okay so the one thing to do is take e2 plus e3 and then what e0 plus e1 plus e4 plus e5 right anything i take i excel it with one i'll get one more point that will be the setup for the two flats right so this is one flat this is for two flats okay so like all the way down to you can take e0 plus e1 what can i take here Two times seven, right? So fourteen plus e fifteen. Is that okay? So that will once again give me seven two flats. All of them check e zero and e one, e zero plus e one, but none, no two of them will have anything in common. Okay, so that's not enough. I have to go to three flats. So I'll take only the first one and show you the three flats. The other ones also you can do something similar. So I'll take only the first one and show you the three flats. So how do you do that? We will have e0 plus e1 plus e2 plus e3. I have to take one more guy and then XR it with 
all the 1, 2 and 3 here. So I might want to take 4. If I take 4, I will get E4 plus E5 plus E6 plus E7. And at this point, I know this will be the first center. Why do I know? Why do I know I can evaluate this sum? How do I know I can evaluate this sum? Yeah, this is, this is, this is basically equal to R0 plus R1 plus R2 plus R3 plus R4 plus R5 plus R6 plus R7. What is that? Well, this is a valid, uh, see, this is a 3 flat. 3 flat is a valid, incidence vectors of 3 flats are valid code words of the dual code. Right? What is the dual code? <coughs> is that correct? Did I get that correct? Did I get it right or do I need to go one more step? Is this fine? So, so what's the dual of two comma five? It's one comma five, right? So I need two comma five itself. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, it's just, it's just doing subtraction wrongly. Okay, so five minus two minus one is two again. So, so three flats will go through two comma five. Okay, so once I go to two three flats, I know this is a valid power of the dual. So I will get the okay. So likewise, I can find other things. Okay, so e zero plus e one plus e two plus e three. Instead of four, I can take see five six seven. You should not take. You can take eight. If you take eight, what happens? You got e nine, e ten plus. 11 and this would be equal to sum S2. Okay. Right? I can evaluate S2 as the R0 sums. So like this you go all the way down to E0 plus E1 plus E2 plus E3. The last one you might want to take would be what? I don't know. Maybe it's uh, 28 or something like that. So so you go to 28. It's going to be 28 plus 29 plus 30 plus 31. That would be S7. Okay. Alright, so this way, so this is a quick and easy way of coming up with all the equations that you need, okay. So once you have equations like this, you evaluate S1 to S7, take a majority, majority will give you what? Majority will give you an estimate of E0 plus E1 plus E2 plus E3, okay. In case of a tie, there will be no tie here because of 7, there is no tie, so you will get that. After that, what do you do? You repeat the same process for E0 plus E1 plus E4 plus E5 all the way down to E0 plus E1 plus E14 plus E15. Okay, after the third st first step is over, you will have estimates for all these guys. Okay, and then you take a majority on that. What will that give you? That will give you E0 plus E1. Now you repeat the same thing for E0 plus E2, E0 plus E7, you will get estimates of all these things, and you take a majority of this, that will give you E. Okay, so this is you proceed. So if you want to go to the last equation, it makes sense to start with the third step first. And then go through and get go to the last. If you start with the last step, it's a bit confusing as to which flat I should take and all is confusing. So if you start with the third step first, it's, it's much better. Okay. Any questions on this decoding algorithm? Or is it saying okay? You okay? All right. So so, so that's, that's, that's all I wanted to cover in Reed Miller Code. So as far as Reed Miller Code is concerned, this will be the last class. And uh, up to here, it's going to be included in your second quiz, which we will write in uh, Tuesday. And what I'm going to ask is, I'm going to ask that everybody write it, even whether you're doing projects or not or anything else. I'm going to ask that you write the exam. Okay, so don't, don't skip the exam. Write the exam. I think it's important. Uh, the evaluation, that, that I'll divide later, but I want everybody to write the exam. Is that okay? Okay, so make sure you show up and write the exam. You don't have to necessarily do well, okay, but just show up for the exam. Okay, so it's, it's, I would like to see the I would like to see the performance. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss discuss some questions from the Reed Miller code assignment. Okay, did anybody have any chance of seeing it? You have a printer? Great. <laughs> well, I didn't have one. So I think somebody would have a printer. Okay. okay, so there's an assignment on uh, read Miller codes. Okay, so.
so so i'm going to go through some of the problems uh, today okay I and mean that and the only other assignment that's missing i think is the bcs week solomon code assignment and that i think i'm hoping i can arrange for somebody to do it over the next week but i'm not here the next week in case it's not possible i'll do it on that monday okay, on 24th i'll do it and then 25th i'll do it in case that you have a reasonable coverage of uh, what you have okay so the first question is quite easy it says uh, given the block length of a regular code we have to find all the dimensions and minimum distance okay so it's a very standard formula for r n of r comma n n equals to r n k equals 1 plus n choose 1 plus so on to n choose r and d equals 2 bar m minus r so remember this is an exact equality here it's not like a bound in the bch case okay so it's an exact equality m is equal to 2 bar m minus r there is a minimum weight of power of that weight so the second question asks you to fill out the table and uh, that's also a very similar question the same thing except that it's arranged in a table and you'll see some nice pattern in the table it will be like a fastest triangle kind of table so maybe you'll like it you can look at that okay third question you have to find generator and pi digit matrices for rm 2 comma 4 okay so how do you answer this question how do you find a generator matrix that is easy right rm 2 comma 4 how do you find a parity check matrix yeah so go to the dual what is the dual dual is rm 1 comma 4 and you find the generator matrix for the dual that will give you the parity check matrix okay find generator so you don't have to really find any dual vectors or anything like that you simply find the generator matrix uh, And uh, the fourth question gives you two codes. It says C1 is Rm1, T, and C2 is the 8,1 repetition code. Okay, remember what is 8,1 repetition code? It's also a Reed Miller code, 0, 3. Okay, and the question asks you to find C, which is the U into plus V. U from C1 and V from C2. Okay, we know the answer to this question, right? What is the answer? C is going to be Rm 1 comma 4. Okay, so that's the standard Rm transfer. Okay, so R comma M is given by R plus 1 comma M is given by R comma M and R plus 1. Uh, okay, so something like that. I think I got it right. Maybe there is a mix up here, but should be okay. Okay, so that will be the minimum distance. Yeah, it's going to be 8. Right? So D2 to D1. Okay, so this is quite a standard result. It's not uh, anything good here. The fifth question is an interesting question. I'll urge you to try it. It's called the randomization lemma. If you have S of D1 to Dm, being any boolean function because it's an arbitrary boolean function what do you mean by a boolean function you know that right? it takes value 0 and 1 it has 2 power m inputs 1 output okay, it's a boolean function you have to show vm or it could be any other v I mean, vm is just chosen for just for example of plus f of v1 to vm okay takes values 0 and 1 equally often Okay. Think about whether that makes sense or not. Okay. Right? It's called the randomization lemma. So you have a Boolean function which maybe is not uniform, as in it doesn't take zeros and ones equally like this. So how do you make it uniform? Simply add any one VM to it, it will become uniform. Okay. So it's not a very difficult proof. You can think about how you might want to prove it. Okay. So there are various methods of proving it in here. Yeah, see this plus is x up. Okay. What will happen? So you are saying V1 through Vm 
this is a function which is only for the last one no so what happens when you add vm when you add vm to that what happens Oh, that's interesting. I didn't know. I mean, this, I, I took this from the book and I thought it was true. I think it's true. Let me let me think about it. Once again. And of all these things. So it will be zero all the way except for the last one where it will be one. Now, if you XOR it with VM, what happens? Wherever Vm is 0, it will again be 0. If Vm is 1, what is the XOR with this? It's going to be 0 for the last alone. Eh? Maybe this plus is not an XOR then. You eh? have to go back and see what the... I'm sorry? If it is Vm itself, yeah, so it cannot be XR, right? So I think XR is wrong then. My plus interpretation, I should go back and look at the book and figure out what the plus is exactly. What if the pluses is R? Is it what? Yeah, but maybe maybe it's R. Okay, so maybe the plus has to be interpreted as R. Okay, so I could be wrong. I saw in the book it was going as plus. I just assumed it's XR, maybe the plus is R, I don't know. I'll check it, I'll check it and correct the question. Okay. So but there is there is this notion of adding a VM to make it equally likely. But, okay, sorry? Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. So let me go back and check this and come back. I, I know there is a equation like this and I'm trying to think why is uh, why is this not working out? Supposed to be. I think maybe is this B m minus one or something? I don't know. Maybe maybe here I made a mistake or something. So maybe in the copying I made a mistake. There is a version like this. Okay, there is a randomization lemma which works definitely like this. You take any boolean function and you add B m. Yeah, yeah. I think I think it's B m minus one. Okay, so I think that's where I made a mistake. Let me check that. Yeah, there's there's a very easy way to prove it by just saying number of values it takes is the same. It's not it's not very really hard to prove. I think it's maybe yeah, maybe this is just m minus one. Okay, so that will work. I think that's it's, it's an easy proof. It's a, it's a proof like that. I mean, so it's not very hard to visualize it. So, so I was confused as to why it's not working. I think this is this is true, right? This is true. So see, when the n is zero, it takes the same number of questions. One also it takes. And then it's it's two par m, and then you do a minus that, and it will be the same. Okay, is that okay? This is okay. Right? I think this is correct. Okay. Here is x r. Yeah, this is x r. Okay, got the m minus one wrong. All right. So this is the randomization lemma is useful sometimes, and actually, actually, I've used it in one application. When you need a good boolean function, which is random, is how you make it random. Okay, so the next question I'm going to skip. It's not a very difficult question. So it's not an easy question. The next one. So maybe I'll just quickly state it. So it says R n of R plus one comma m. That's all. U plus v. But u always belongs to it will occur at R comma m, and then v is either zero or uh, each term degree is equal to equal to R plus one. Okay. okay. This is a very easy statement, you know. I mean, you take uh, what is R m of R plus one comma m. It has all polynomials of degree less than or equal to R plus one. Take all the terms which are degree equal to R plus one, keep it separately, and then look at the remaining guy. Obviously, that's going to belong to R m of R comma m. Okay, so you either have no degree R plus one terms, or you have only R plus one terms. So V is basically the R plus one degree terms in the in your code, in your code polynomial, and U is the remaining term. The remaining term will belong to R m of R comma m, and this will belong to R. M. Okay, so it's very easy to show. So sixth question I'll leave out. Seventh is interesting. I want you to think about it. Okay. So you have a code of block length n. Okay, and you want to do one step majority logic decoding. Okay, 
okay n is the block length one step majority logic decoding okay so number of errors number of uh, uh, okay so error correcting capability this is made up that way so it turns out you have to show error correcting capability is less than or equal to n minus 1 by 2 times d prime minus 1 where d prime is the demon of the dual port okay so you have an nk for c and you're doing one step majority logic decoding okay if you do one step majority logic decoding the error correcting capability is less than or equal to n minus 1 by 2 times d prime minus okay so think about it for a while we'll give you both two flavors Any ideas? How do you do something like this? Okay, so when I say error correcting capability is bounded, what is bounded? Something is bounded, right? There is this. Before you go to the error correcting capability, what should you start with? In majority of the decoding, what do you start with? J, right? What is that J? Number of orthogonal parity checks on any one coordinate. Okay, so that J has to be bounded. What should be the bound on J? If number of error correcting capability is n minus one by two times d prime minus one, j should have an upper bound. What should be the upper bound on j? Two times d one minus one by d prime minus one. Okay, so that should be the bound. Okay, so if you have j orthogonal parity checks on say bit one, then j has to be less than or equal to n minus one by d prime minus one. So why how do d prime enter the picture, which is minimum distance of the dual? Why does it enter the picture? Yeah, the parity checks are code words of the dual. Okay, so the number of ones in each parity check has to be at least greater than d prime. One of them will be the will be one, right? The the remaining ones will be at least d prime minus one. And I want no two of them to have anything in common. So what's the maximum I can have? N minus one by d prime minus one. Can't have more than that. Okay, so it's as simple as that. It's a very simple argument. You see that? Okay, so if you want, you can write it down very precisely. Suppose I'm looking for so these are my six positions. Okay, I'm looking for code words, dual code words, orthogonal on the first bit. Okay, so suppose I have J of them. Okay, the first position is one. The remaining will be spread out. Okay, so we'll have ones here, and then there will be no overlap. Like this, we'll go to the last. Part. Okay, so let it kind of work. Okay, right. Each weight here is what at least d prime minus one, and you have how many here? N minus one. So clearly j has to be less than or equal to n minus one. Okay, cannot be greater than that. So the error correcting capability has to be. So okay, how do I get this from this? So okay. Solve it. Okay. No two of them overlap. So j times d prime minus one has to be less than or equal to n minus one. Where n minus one is the total number here. It cannot be greater than n minus one. Okay. If greater than n minus one, it means what? Two of them definitely overlap. Okay. So it's like definitely less than. Is it okay? This is for one step. There's a similar result which is eight, which I'm not going to prove here. So it turns out if you have l step. Majority logic decoding. Uh, 
uh, error correcting capability is less than or equal to m by d prime minus 1 by 2. So, here is okay about how you, how you do a result like this. It is a bit uh, complicated to control this. So, one, uh, one feature of this result is suppose you take a read Solomon code, what are its parameters? nk, n minus k plus 1, right? Its dual turns out is also a read Solomon code. You can show this, we never showed this in class, and the minimum distance is k plus 1. Okay, so it turns out dual will be like this. Okay, so here, here you have k plus 1. Okay. So, what will be the error correcting capability by my majority logic, one step majority logic decoding for each Solomon codes? It's bounded by n minus 1 by 2 times k minus 1. Okay. So, right, if n by k is anything not too large, unless you have k being really, really small, this will be nothing. Okay. So, basically, what this bound means is for each Solomon codes and all, you cannot hope to achieve much by one step majority logic decoding. Okay. So, you will not get much. Even this is bad. Okay, see, the n by d prime will again become n by k. So even n step majority logic decoding won't do much for each Solomon codes. Okay, so try to prove this. I'm not going to prove it in class. It's it's a modification of this proof, but you have to do more work. It's not as simple as this. You have to go to l step and then you have to try to count it more carefully. That's all. You'll get this answer. N by d prime minus one by. Okay. All right. The next one is interesting. If there is a code C. And there exists k parity checks orthogonal on each coordinate. That implies d min is greater than equal to j plus. Okay, how do you prove this? One way to kind of roughly argue this is to say you can correct j by 2 errors, okay, which means d min has to be definitely greater than or equal to j plus 1, but that seems like a crude argument. I mean, you are not really explicitly using this very nicely. So, it turns out you can also do that. Okay, So, once again, go back to this, this picture here. This picture is a nice picture to have in mind. Okay, So, you have a situation like this for every single coordinate. Okay, So, if you have a non-zero code word, it has at least one coordinate which is non-zero. You go to that coordinate, maybe it is one. Okay, so you go to that coordinate and then look at all these orthogonal parity checks. This guy is one, which means among this these guys, among these guys, there should be at least how many ones? A single one. Okay. Again, amongst these guys, there should be at least a single one. As in amongst what I really mean is amongst these guys. Okay, so like that amongst these guys here. There should be a single one. Likewise, there will be at least a single one in a set of j. So, you have j plus 1 which is itself. Okay, so, you can directly argue that there will be a minimum distance of j. Okay, so that is for that. And then the tenth question uh, asks you to devise majority logic decoders. So I am going to skip it. Okay, so, this is to for instance uh, devise majority logic decoders. Seven four Hamming code. We've actually done in class. Okay. And the other thing I've asked is the fifteen seven uh, two error correcting BCH code. Okay, think about how we might want to do that. It is a very uh, it's a very interesting algorithm for the fifteen seven uh, code also. Okay, so think about how we might want to do that. So, the 11th question I am going to throw open for discussion right now because I am not very sure what the answer is going to be. Okay. So, so for the read molar code R comma M, minimum distance is 2 power M minus R. Okay. So, the 11th question is about uh, devising a uh, 2 power M minus R minus 1 
erasure correcting decoder. Is this possible? How will you devise a erasure correcting decoder? How will you correct erasures with these speed muller things? I mean it's correctable, I'm not, I'm not problems with saying this is not correctable, you have to come up with a decoder which will correct it, that's my question. I mean also a simple decoder, see one, one decoding you can always do for erasures is the following, okay, so remember this, this is a very simple idea but you should remember this, so if you have a parity check matrix for the code, okay, you know that H times R transpose equals, uh, did I get this right, H times C transpose is 0, right? You know this, okay? Now, what has happened when you go through an erasure channel? As in, when you have erasures, what is not erased is actually received correctly, right? When you have two power m minus r minus one erasures, you cannot hope to correct any errors. Yes, if you want to correct this many erasures, then no errors will be correctable. So only erasures will be there. So outside of erasures, you can assume there are no errors. Okay, so let's assume that first. Once you assume that, what happens? So the received word r is actually what? How will you describe the received word r? It will either contain, if it contains say c1, c2 and then suddenly it will an erasure. Okay? So whenever you have an erasure, put a variable there, x1. Okay? And then likewise you will have x2, say you have xe. Okay? The last one is cm. So there are e variables in my r, variables that I don't know, okay, so it's unknown to me, I receive as erasures. Every other coordinate is exactly known, accurately known, you can assume that. Only then you can correct 2 power m minus r minus 1 erasures, otherwise you can't correct it. So you assume outside of it, everything is known to you. Then what happens? What will be h times, so, so for the code word, h times this is equal to 0, right? You see that? So the valid code word, this has to be true. Okay. So you take only the variables corresponding to this, which means you take the submatrix of H corresponding to the corresponding to those positions. Okay. So you will get HX times X1 through XC equals some S and the S you will know exactly. Yeah, how can I compute the S? How will I get a S here on the right? So I will be H times the remaining, see here I have HX, right? Those correspond to the columns of H which got erased. The remaining columns are not erased. I know the exact bit that was received. So you multiply by that and you will get this. Okay? So, so if you want a simple example, if your H is something like 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, uh, 1, 1, okay? And if you receive an erasure which is uh, C1, X1, C3, okay, what does this translate to? Okay, 1, 0 times X1 equals, basically 0, 1, 1, 1 times C1, C3, okay, so that is what I mean, okay. So this you can multiply out because you know C1 and C3 exactly, so you multiply out, you will get a vector. Same thing you do here, except that you have n and it is not known to me. So, whatever you have known things, you multiply it out. You will get just one vector. Whatever is unknown, you keep as a, you keep as an unknown variable vector. So, how do I know that this will have a solution or a unique solution? Okay, that is where I use this 2 power m minus r minus 1. I know E is less than or equal to 2 power m minus r minus 1. Okay, 
that implies hx will have full column rank why is that why will hx have full column rank if e is less than or equal to 2 par m minus 1 see number of columns here is e and e is less than or equal to 2 par m minus m which is b minus 1 okay so number of columns is less than the minimum distance that will be linearly independent okay, so it will have full column rank so this will have a unique solution Okay, so you go and find that unique solution, you can fix your erasures. Okay? So when you want to correct only erasures, assuming everything else is error free, there is no problem, you can happily correct it. Okay? How about correcting mixtures? Okay? There you have to come up with some smart algorithm. Of course you can do majority logic decoding on the punctured version, not, not maximum likelihood decoding on the punctured version. That is one direct method, it's all, it always exists, right? so that is how we prove that result. But what if you want a simple algorithm for erasures and error correcting? Can you adapt your maximum likelihood decoder or, or your majority logic decoder here to correct erasures? That is the question that, that is interesting. Think about it. Uh, the answer I have given does not really tackle that. It does not tackle the error part. Can you correct erasures as well as errors? That is the question which is, which is interesting for read Muller codes. I, I do not know if I have seen any algorithm for that. So maybe, maybe there is something out there. I have not seen it. Okay? All right, so that's all the problems on the regional code assignment. It's not a, it's not, a, it's not very large like the other ones. If the reform and code and the DCH code assignments are much bigger. Okay, so we'll stop here for today.